Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you here this morning to our Sunday celebration with the First Presbyterian Church of Newport. Thou my grace, 
this gracious God, but actually we have become so comfortable in our darkness that we fear the light. It is as though we are living in a cave, and rather than take the risk to be face the light, we prefer to face the dark wall. Give us courage to take risks, which will result in not only our own transformation, but also the transformation opportunities for others. Forgive our stubborn insistence on living in darkness. Take our hands and lead us to the light. Amen. Please join me in a moment of silence for peace and grace.
31, you cast your lot with us. You know our pain, you know our joy. Hear our prayers for those for whom we pray in intercession. We pray for Gail Masters, for Craig Masters, who has been in the hospital for a month with the COVID virus. We pray for strength and comfort for his children, Tia and Craig. We also pray for Paul and Clayton Harney, who are being treated for prostate cancer. We pray for Judy O'Brien, for her daughter, Diane, and son-in-law, Danny, and grandson, Dylan, Bloody, who all have COVID. We pray with Pastor and Moira. Pray with me for my brother, Mark who has serious health issues and is waiting for a diagnosis on the spot on his lung. Are there any prayer requests today? Lord, we lift up the prayer requests that we have lifted up out loud and those that we have shared with you in the silence of our hearts. We cry out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and we lay our follow you where you go. With your eyes, may we continue in generosity and give ourselves over to good works as we pray as you taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Amen. Please pray with me. Oh Lord, you have given us your word for a light to shine on our path. Grant us to meditate on that word and follow its teaching that we may find in it the light that shines more and more until the perfect day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first lesson is taken from Jeremiah. I'll be reading, I'll be reading. 
chapter 31, 7 through 9. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy, O Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and said. Lord, I say your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expected mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble. Because I have been to the God of my mother, and Ephraim is my firstborn child. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. In your worship bulletin today, you will find words for our song of praise this morning, Day by Day. And this is a very famous piece from the musical Godspell. So, I invite you to join us, but we have one little rule of housekeeping when we come to the clapping part. Uh, please clap on to the floor. One, two, three, four. Otherwise, it gets a little strange to hear all these claps. So, uh, the choir will help with us great where that belongs, but we hope that you join and sing along uh, with us. So, I think Pastor is ready with the microphone, right? Before he's ready here to sing, right? So, the choir can all stand up and lead us uh, for day by day. <clears throat>
When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted out all the more, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have created for us. We thank you for the gift of this hour to come and gather uh, together to, to hear your word, to listen to what you would have us uh, hear and be who you would have us be. We pray that you would help us to see where we have been blinded in our lives, where we have uh, failed to see what you the world and see within ourselves, see within others um, what you have created. So help us to see this day. And I ask that the words in my mouth and I pray that the meditation of all our hearts together would be acceptable to you because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. I would like to ask a favor of you. All of you received a mask in your bulletin. And I'd like to ask you to put it on, just like this. Time to put on your mask. Okay. Challenge you. Would uh, like to take on the uh, challenge? This mask wearing today during your sermon time. Yes, in worship in front of everybody else. Even though you've never done anything so undignified before in worship, if you can bear it, leave it on during the throughout the course of our. our meditation. If not, I ask you to take it in your hand and just hold the mask in front of you uh, during this time. So I would ask you, how does it, ask yourselves, how does it feel to wear a mask? Especially when you have a uh, <laughs> face mask on, not only the face mask, the, the eyes, but the mouth as well. How does it feel? Does it feel kind of uncomfortable? Does it feel outlandish? Does it feel cool? Uh, does it feel sacrilegious? Um, there are a couple of reasons why I asked you to wear this mask today, and we'll get to them. But the most obvious one is a reminder, a reminder to each of us that we wear masks every day. We wear invisible masks every day, maybe without even realizing it. Every day we hide a part of ourselves from other people. We pretend we are people who we are not. Sometimes that is good. Sometimes there's a time and place to exude confidence to our children when they are frightened. However, when we are lying or misrepresenting ourselves to other people, to maybe a prospective client or to an employer or to our loved ones, then it's wrong. But we can get into the habit of hiding ourselves, even to ourselves, because we cannot bear to see what well, what is there? We perhaps some of us speak piously in church, but at home we may rage at a family member in the privacy behind our doors. If we're scared and we we act all tough and macho in front of strangers and friends. But how many people do really see beyond that tough exterior to see the sensitive or the teddy bear inside? Sometimes we're really angry about something and we just pretend we're not, oh, it's nothing really. Or we drive the latest model cars and the most up-to-date fashion and flash around the, the most latest cell phone. And uh, the reality is that we live month to month. We cannot bear that we don't measure up to the norms that have been passed down to us by our parents or our siblings or our, our family. We camouflage our true opinions and beliefs because we, we want to fit in, we don't want to be rejected. Who are we really behind?
behind the masks that we wear? Who are we hiding that we don't want others to see out of fear of rejection? We have become a blind people who cannot see ultimately who we really are. We are children of a loving and forgiving God. We are people called to an abundant, serving life. We are called to promote peace and justice in our world and to serve in God's name. And the question is, how on earth did we get so blinded? How is it that we cannot see ourselves, see each other, see creation as through the eyes of God, as God sees it? Who are you behind your mask? Who are we behind all the masks that we wear? Today we are called to witness, to, to the witness of a blind Bartimaeus, to see the blindness, not only his blindness, which is obvious, but the blindness of the crowd that surrounds him, and view that sinful blindness, which also led the Israelites into exile to become that remnant that Jer Jeremiah now says God is calling back to Zion and bringing back to life like a water garden. We are all blind to the generosity of God, to God's profound love for creation and for us. How did we get so blind? Blindness in and of itself was a common ailment in the ancient Near East, with the hot sun and the gritty sand and all, the, all those regular eye ailments that plague vision. At the same time, blindness, along with other illnesses, were considered, were thought of by the people to be caused by sin. Blinding, blinding was also a punishment or a crime. Blind people could not function as priests. They could not sing in a temple. Uh, or they could not participate in some trades, even though they were capable of it. On the other hand, Jewish people were often reminded to treat the blind with compassion, and that a special attribute of the Messiah, the coming Messiah, would be that the Messiah would open the eyes of the blind. So, as Jesus is leaving Jericho, beginning his final approach to Jerusalem, this blind beggar named Bartimaeus, sitting by the roadside, discovers who it is that's passing by, and he can't help himself, and he shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, Bartimaeus is the only person in Mark's gospel who uses the royal title, son of David, implying that Jesus is David, King David's rightful and true heir. Given that this is also a messianic title, and it is the Messiah's role to bring sight to the blind, the question is, why is the crowd so reluctant for Jesus to help Bartimaeus? Why do they sternly tell him to be quiet? They cannot see. For some reason, they can't take in this confession of faith that Bartimaeus makes. Although he is blind, he sees Jesus for who he truly is, the Messiah, the son of David. Now they rebuke Bartimaeus, and it happens all the time in the Gospels, rebuking the women, and when the disciples display bad theology or bad manners, or when Peter rebukes Jesus for claiming himself to be a suffering Messiah, you know, a rebuke is basically putting your putting, I mean, put in your place. Uh, this crowd is trying to put Bartimaeus in his place because the crowd is blinded to the opportunity that a miracle is going to unfold because the Messiah is going to bring sight right now, right then and there, to the blind. They, and for some reason, they did not want to see this. But this does not stop Bartimaeus. On the contrary, he cries out even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus does something he doesn't, it's not done at any other point in Mark's gospel. He stands still. He stops. Of course, we, we, uh, it's, it is implied that he, when he's in prayer or conversation or healing, that he, he must be stopped. But this is the first time 
it is pointed out in the gospel text. Notice it that Jesus stops and stands still because Bartimaeus has caught his attention and Jesus' focus is on him. And Jesus has observed how the crowd is trying to silence Bartimaeus and hold him back. So instead of addressing Bartimaeus directly, Jesus turns to the crowd and tells the crowd, you bring him over here. And Bartimaeus doesn't waste any time, does he? He throws his cloak aside, and this is significant because for a blind man, that cloak was like his table to gather money. The cloak was his protection against the elements. It was a sleeping bag. Would he be so sure that it would be there when he returned, if he returned? In a way, throwing this cloak aside was a sign that Bartimaeus was ready to leave this past behind, even without a guarantee. He was placing total trust and confidence in Jesus. And so Jesus has this direct question to Bartimaeus. No beating around the bush, no assumptions. Like, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, teacher, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus reacts by telling Bartimaeus, go, because your faith has made you well. And faith in the gospel, we must remember, is a trusting relationship with Jesus, engaging oneself in the ministry of Jesus in the world. And Bartimaeus does this, and as a result, he follows Jesus on the way, on his way. Bartimaeus is leaving the beggar behind, and he has become a disciple. Our lives of faith are similar in some ways. We go through periods of darkness and blindness to sight. And God calls us in our blindness to recognize how loved we are in Jesus, how gifted we are by the Holy Spirit, how privileged we are to serve as a people of faith in this world. The good news, however, is like for, like for Bartimaeus, we get to begin again. We get to reclaim our sight and regain it. We get to see who we are in Christ and see others, see each other through the eyes of God. This is the vision we are called to embrace. This is what is underneath the blindness that we cling to. I also wanted us to wear these masks today for another reason, because I wanted to share a story about one of my children's favorite movies when they were growing up. It was a, the, a movie that was, uh, came out in 2004, a commuter, uh, computer animated movie called The Incredibles. How many here have anybody seen The Incredibles? Yeah, most of us have, or some of, some of us have. But let me tell you a little bit about The Incredibles. It's a story about a handful of superheroes who are left behind in the world, who are now in hiding because their existence is threatened. And there's this family of superheroes called the Bars, and they are leading this very ordinary, hidden life, and they're living the tension of not being able to be who God has called them, to, has created them to be. The children are discouraged constantly from using their God-given abilities. Their former life as crime-fighting superheroes is completely locked away. However, as the nasty supervillain syndrome threatens to take over the world and destroy the remaining superheroes, a decision must be faced. Do they stay hidden or do they move into action? You see, part of being a superhero hero, especially an incredible superhero, is being able to see that everybody has a gift to benefit the world. We are a gifted people. To defeat evil, our gifts must work together. It's not like Superman or Batman or the Lone Ranger who individually set out and they get all the glory. Here, everyone, everyone is gifts are needed, and everyone must cooperate with each other. And so in the, this movie, in The Incredibles, the parents see this, and they make a decision to support their children into becoming who they were created to be, superheroes. And even the children get to help defeat evil. And of course, this rite of passage is putting on the uniform of a superhero and the mask, a mask which looks very similar to the mask that some of us are, have kept on 
until now. If our church is to thrive, we have to be able to see underneath all the masks we individually wear, that we collectively wear, that and be able to acknowledge where we are blind and see who God has called us to be, these incredible people. We are, and I challenge you to hold that mask or put, if you don't have it on, you are to see yourself as God created you to be, an incredible superhero. We need to open our eyes to the gifts and that are present here in each other and in our community. We must work together and serve together. We must call them out. We must encourage them in each other. We must promote justice and peace. Follow where Jesus leads us. So today, I want us to see. Look around. Look at each other with new eyes. We can do incredible things. We can work together to make the kingdom of the son of David a reality. Can you see it? Can you see it? Oh, if we could, what perfect vision that would be. Amen. Amen. And now you can keep off your mask. Thank you, Pastor, for your Thank you. 
Jesus, light of the world, shine 